How do there guys, welcome back to Edgar TV. Before we get into the footage today of today's video diary and vlog from the Scottish Open, I just want to put something out there straight away. You've probably seen the thumbnail of this and the title of this video and I've been, I've been debating whether to even make this video or not, but one thing that I thought about when I was thinking do I make this video or not is one of the things this channel relies upon is authenticity. I, I can't just all be great if something's wrong, if something's not there, I have to say it. And I feel that that's what I've got to do. But first of all, I just want to say I fully appreciate the job that everybody's doing at these sort of events. Most people that are putting on these events are purely voluntary basis. And I, I get that things aren't going to go always to plan but th this one just seemed to have a few too many things i'll let you know what they are throughout the video i'll also have a little bit of a summary at the end but please if you are watching this and you are involved in the sort of organized please don't take this as a knock just maybe just look at its feedback because I, I really don't want it to come across in the wrong way it's just that there was just a lot of things here that just didn't quite go to what i'd expect from such a big open but we'll, we'll get into the footage we'll look through that and let's say i'll let you know throughout this video but again i, I do i do apologize but i i have to be authentic i have to say what i think otherwise this don't work but it was a trip to scotland and it was a last minute decision to go to scotland actually we weren't originally going i'm actually going to savak next weekend but i wanted to try and keep it going and keep the darts going and try and get more games we was meant to be leaving at 12 o'clock but zach turned up late so we ended up leaving quite late that's actually three o'clock zach's not actually reset his clock yet so it's actually an hour off and it was a long drive we're, we're talking five and a half hours and luckily we actually hit no traffic despite the fact it was a very very boring trip up so we ended up putting on the edgar mega mix throughout the trip which if you've ever heard the edgar mega mix you'll know it is absolutely banging with banging tunes zach being entertaining as always but when we actually got into scotland there was like this weird sort of light show going on it didn't quite pick it up too well on the camera here but if anyone knows what that is, please let me know in the comments section. I, I thought we was about to get abducted by aliens at one point, to be honest. But we did get to Scotland in plenty of time, and we got there in plenty of time for Zach. If we just pause this here a second. We got there in plenty of time for everyone's favourite show, everyone's favourite moment of the vlogs. Zach playing Who Hangs Up First with his girlfriend. He's already on there. He's already trying to get for the next time. Go on, you hang up. Now, as you can imagine, he was on to me this time. He spotted me last... He didn't spot me last time, should I say, when I was putting the video together. But this time he spotted me. This time, though, three minutes. So we actually managed to shave a few minutes off last time. So who hangs up first? So after clearing up my sick from them two, I was able to wake up nice and early, 6 o'clock in the morning, to get ready for the darts. Now, the darts actually was an early start, 10pm start, 8 o'clock registration, so I got up at 6 to make sure I was showered, ready and freshened to go, and also so I could pop into the local cuisine and try out a McDonald's. Who actually did Iron Brew! I was so excited by this, had to have Iron Brew in my breakfast, big, big fan of Iron Brew. I know some of you would have pressed that extra hash brown button out there, but got to the darts early, the room was already busy, and I tell you what, the issues I feel started straight away. I had a few throws on the board and instantly I said I feel like it's low. So we got the measure out, we checked three different boards and it was all low by about half a treble on average. Which does make quite a difference when you've been playing quite a while. You can sort of feel when a board's not right. So a shame there in regards to that. Now... The setup of the room was quite interesting. I'm going to draw it out for you. So the boards was in the middle like this. So back-to-back -back boards with boards facing sort of outward. So you're playing away from the middle of the room to the outside of the room. Now, if you think about the space, you've got the boards there. You've got the Oki towards the back. So boards, Oki. Then you've got like a bit of no man's land, which is where you're going to stand and wait behind your opponent, that sort of bit of space for you. And then it was marked off with tables, which I thought, brilliant, this is what you want to see. You've got that bit of space in front of here, and 
ideally that means everything in front of the tables is like your play zone this wasn't how it was what you tend to find was people walking in front of the table sort of cutting across you while you're in the middle of games where you had to sort of stop and wait even conversations you see here one of the officials having a full-on conversation literally right next to me while i'm sort of in game and then you'll sort of come back you had to stop so many times as people sort of cut across you in sort of mid-match this happened all all the way through the people sort of standing on the inside of the tables now one of the reasons for this is the room just wasn't big enough it wasn't big enough for this sort of open with that amount of people now this event had 502 entries in the men's event plus you've got to then think they'll bring along with them maybe a guest or a friend someone who's driving you know they, they might have a partner the um, children there'll be more than just the 500 players in the room so what you've got there is a very small corridor which you'll see as i look through the footage going forward between the table and the actual outside of the room and then if people want to stand and watch the matches they'll stand in that walkway so there was no walkway so the the only way people was able to get around the room was to keep cutting across the front of you I was going at one point, I think I wanted 64, and I went to approach the Oki, and two people walked across the face of the Oki as I was about to throw, and I'm like, I'm about to throw, try and win a leg here, and two people just cut across. You can't really say anything, you can't go, oh, blah, 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 because then it makes me look like an absolute numpty head, and like I say, I've got to kind of try and be better than that to sort of cause issues at the sort of event but it, it gets frustrating I, I didn't realize how frustrated i was until i watched back some of the footage and like there you can see my face um sort of getting quite angry with the situation um obviously i'm used to playing different sort of environments i've always played on the pdc this is all new to me but i just thought there was a few things here that certainly could be improved upon certainly those board measure i'm confident absolutely confident the board measurements are fine it's more the floor in terms of where they're where they're placed on the floor uh, i'm sure the trestles and the stands and everything they've got are probably spot on it was probably just where they, where they're placed and let's say instantly from the second i was throwing i could tell that they was off as far as the darts went ah uh, I, i'd use the word at the weekend embarrassing I, I really wasn't happy with the game i wasn't happy where i was playing i wasn't playing well at all it was on darts connect if you want to see how i played the averages are all on there i genuinely haven't looked and i'm not going to look i don't want to know it wasn't a good performance i managed to get through to the last 32 on the first day got myself nine points so that, but that's all i got there was nothing on the sunday one of the great things i did really enjoy about this event was being out there meeting people people that support the channel and watch this if i did see you over the weekend thank you for coming up and saying hello and support in the channel as always it was so good to put some faces to some names as well out there but i think there was no surprise for me to see the entry numbers change so much from one day to the other sunday i believe it was 70 people did not register who played on the saturday and i think that could be a telling fact as well when we look at the event itself there was 500 players there on the saturday i took four and a half hours to play one game it sped up a little bit as it went on but four and a half hours for one game that doesn't suit me as a player or how i sort of play once i start playing i have to keep playing and ticking over it's no benefit to me to have those large breaks and gaps so i went to the practice room to see if i could get a throw in there we was talking seven to ten people at times sometimes you could get it a little bit quieter in there but 502 players in the room and that's just the men's you've got the women's going on the youth going on as well so we could probably say maybe 800 players in the event in total four practice boards so if we're looking at just the men that's one board per 125 people so what you need to do is you need to get on the board and get practicing before the event even starts now this is also compromised because the bar staff wasn't stuck too well so a lot of the time you're going up 40 minutes waits to get a refreshment so you end up with an hour and 20 then you're on a board with three or four people so again you're only using quarter or a third of that time a couple of little things as well in regards to the actual boards and the structure i didn't like this beam you'll see across the top there now although no one i saw ever hit this beam and i certainly didn't hit it when you're throwing your darts you feel like you've got the potential of doing so Especially for me, who's got a bit of a, a loft in the action. 
So I was always sort of anticipating hitting that, and I actually had a few darts when I was throwing at tops or twelves that I pulled really, really low, just out of fear or anticipation of hitting that beam. You'll also see as well no surround around the board, which just makes it feel a little bit smaller. Th these are little things, but they do change the perception of the throw, and they do change quite a lot of the feel and everything in regards to, to the game. Now... It wasn't just at the venue, I sort of didn't have the most positive experience. This also came into to the hotel, we paid £100 a night for this hotel, and they're blaring music out till 1 o'clock. Literally, everything that could go wrong at this event did sort of go wrong for me, so it wasn't something I sort of enjoyed as much. Certainly... I feel it was more of a knock to confidence rather than a step forward. And th the fact that I managed to come away with nine points somehow uh, is kind of something to take away and go, well, at least it wasn't a completely wasted journey. But I don't really think that... Uh, it, it's certainly not an event I'd probably look at going back to again. In regards to the Open... I think the room's too small, for starters. Well, like I say, people cutting across all the time, especially when you're playing your game. But I think the WDF as well have got a possibility here of stepping in and making some changes. So I, I think it was oversubscribed. And I think going forward, what they need to do is they need to put some rulings in place. So with this, you've got silver ranked event to do that they have to have so many seeds they have to pay out a minimum prize money these are rules that already exist but i think they also need to look at the player experience and by that there needs to be a minimum amount of practice boards available per amount of match boards or entries so this 500 entries four boards not good enough 125 players per board and that's men only before youth and women so that's not good enough so match boards four and a half hours i played one game not enough boards. So I, I think that what they should do, this is this is my proposal, this is what I would do. I would say, right, we need to have amount of practice boards per match boards. The PDC, the pinnacle of darts, they give you eight, match, uh, eight practice boards for 16 lanes. So one practice board per two lanes. That's not going to happen. That, that's unrealistic. But it needs to be a bit closer um, in regards to lowering that 125 per practice board. Number of entries. So, 500 entries, this should be a minimum of 50 boards. Minimum of 50 boards. So, I reckon that you should say 10 players per board, which gives you 8 players, and then a couple of prelims. To have a whole round of sort of prelims as such is just far too much. So, 8 players a board, plus you can have a couple of prelim games as well. That that should be the maximum, so that you're only ever sort of four or so games away from, from playing again. It's these early rounds that make such a difference, and wh that's when you start getting draws, or you get start, people get caught out cold. So, certainly for a silver or a gold-ranked event, that should be the case. The bronze events I've been to have got this right. They've been there, Iceland... Is probably the best tournament I've been to in terms of the organisational side of things and the running of it. When I went to Slovenia, plenty of practice boards, plenty of match boards. Spain, what they did over there is they started the women's event later so that they could open up all the boards to play the early rounds and then it went down to less boards as it went on and it also allowed practice boards. That's maybe something that Scotland could have done here. Say, right, okay, the men's is starting at 10 o'clock. The, the room where the women are playing, that's going to be a practice room until the women play. They can come in at, say, 2 o'clock. But uh, they start at 2, but they start preparing from 12. So they've got that two-hour window. So from 10 o'clock till 12 o'clock, that room is a practice room. So people can keep playing and keep turning over. Certainly someone like me who's sort of struggling physically at the moment to play darts with the nerve problems and things that I've got within the arm, I need to keep playing. So it's no good when I practice now, sit down for two hours. So I would literally jump into that room and keep playing. So just a couple of little suggestions, maybe to look at staggering the times. If you can't go and put more boards up, look at staggering those time slots to allow people to get that proper preparation in so that we can get some peak lines of performance. But like I said, I didn't want this to be a knock. Hopefully there's some things in here that can be taken as feedback. But for me, it's off to Slovak. Week of practice ahead, couple of throws this week, and then try and get ready for that. A silver on the Saturday, a, a bronze on the Sunday. Hopefully get some points on the table there. Get myself up that table. It's currently still in a lakeside qualifying position. We know that's the goal and what we want to do. So, let's say, nine points is better than nothing. And it was a bonus trip, really, because it wasn't really on the agenda in the first place. Catch you soon, guys, for some more Edgar TV.